All right, so after breaking down that match, let's look deeper at the Anaconda choke mechanics and the defense that Cabrinha used. Here, Hoffa is going to demonstrate how he likes to perform the Anaconda choke. So Hoffa uses this exact same setup at an earlier match at ADCC in 2009 against Justin Rader. Threads from a guillotine control to the anaconda grip, works to get his leg free, uses his leg to pull the elbow down to internally rotate the shoulder. And this position right here is a very strong position for Hoffa to be able to occlude the arteries and create the blood choke that he needs to finish the anaconda choke. Here, he's, Justin's unable to get out, and he's forced to tap to the position. So let's take one more look at what Hoffa does with his leg to clear the elbow. So here, Hoffa throws his left leg up to catch the end of the lever of Justin's arm, which is his elbow. And he's going to leg press it down to pull it out of the way. This is going to allow Hoffa to really get a tight anaconda choke so that he can internally rotate Justin's right shoulder so that, that shoulder comes up into his neck and will block the carotid arteries on the right side of his neck. So let's look at another video to get the proper choke mechanics of the anaconda. Bicep and compressing right. down, putting my elbows together. The fuck is this? Now this sometimes doesn't get a guy to tap. So what? Mom, not this one. Put on the other one. Yeah. No, this one's shit. So in this video, Hoffa hits a excellent anaconda choke against Jake Shields. Notice it's the exact same position that Hoffa used in his demonstration and against Justin Rader at ADCC 2009. Once again, the hand that's threading through underneath the armpit is pointing upwards and he's able to close his left elbow tightly to internally rotate the shoulder. So an anaconda choke is a arm triangle variation and we have three sides. The first side is a backstop against our opponent's neck so that they can't release the pressure of the choke. The second side we have the first inclusion of the artery which Hoffa's right forearm and bicep is cutting off the side of Jake's neck. On the last side we have the second inclusion in which Jake's uh, shoulder is being internally rotated upwards into his neck by Hoffa being able to close his left elbow and by rowing with his right arm. So now let's take a look again at Cabrinha versus Hoffa at 2009 ADCC and see how Hoffa set up these chokes and how Cabrinha was able to survive them. So here Hoffa tries to sweep Cabrinha over and as Cabrinha recomposes his base, Hoffa switches there from guillotine control to the anaconda choke. And notice how Cabrinha is posting now with his left arm so that he's able to a base and he's refusing to let Hoffa knock him to the side that Hoffa was being able to finish those other chokes. Here Hoffa's on the opposite side that he wants to and he's trying to gator roll. So Cabrinha is posting with his right leg here to have an opposing force vector to the way that Hoffa wants to turn him. Hoffa can still make this extremely tight and unbearable but he's now the arm that's threading through the neck and coming out by the armpit is pointing downwards. Cabrinha manages the range, sits down, still has his right leg there posted so he can't roll. But now he's also using his left arm here to frame Hoffa's hips so that Hoffa's not able to hip in and create the proper angle to internally rotate Cabrinha's shoulder. Here he's hand fighting to try and get his neck clear. Looks to try and kick away as well with his left leg there. Here he's using his right arm, I mean he's illegally grabbing the shorts, but he's able to frame him out, and he's using his left arm to push at the end of the lever of Hoffa's shoulder, and you can see how Hoffa's arm is a little high up on his neck now. It's now sitting upwards on Cabrinha's jaw. Cabrinha is able to generate base and pull his head out. So let's look at the next video. Out. Just see. Mom! Wrong video! Not the one where he falls over. What the fuck is that? All right, so once again, Hoffa sets up guillotine control to move into the anaconda choke off of Cabrinha's single leg attempt. This time, Hoffa has now ended up on the right side that he prefers where his arm going through and coming out the bicep, or out the armpit rather, is actually pointing upwards. 
See, notice right now, Cabrinha has his legs crossed around Hoffa's ankles. No problem, that's good for me. I track his leg, I cross my feet, and now I start squeezing. So Hoffa wants to have his ankles crossed around Cabrinha's, but we can see that Cabrinha actually has his ankles crossed around Hoffa's leg. What Cabrinha is doing is accessing Hoffa's leg as a lever and stopping Hoffa from being able to curl his leg and generate force to drive his hips in. So right now, Hoffa is squeezing with intensity, but he's unable to engage his hips with proper base. Cabrinha starts turning around, and as he does, he uses the placeholder system of gripping Hoffa's leg with his left arm so that Hoffa's not able to move through into mount and is unable to post. So now Cabrinha is able to roll Hoffa once again to the side where Hoffa's arm is now pointing downwards. Once again, Cabrinha is basing out with his right leg so that he can't get gator rolled. So now Cabrinha has also managed to turn his body so that he's on top of Hoffa and his chest is pointing towards Hoffa's. So now the positioning is completely off from what Hoffa usually prefers to be able to finish a strong anaconda choke. For the size of the triangle, the first side being the backstop is now Hoffa's bicep and crook of his elbow in the back of Cabrinha's neck. And for the second side of the triangle and the first inclusion of an artery, we have Hoffa's forearm running along the left side of Cabrini's neck. And it looks like it's putting more pressure into the side of his neck rather than cutting off Cabrini's carotid artery. The last side of the triangle, we have where the shoulder gets internally rotated. It looks like Hoffa's chest and shoulder is in the wrong position to be able to actually internally rotate Cabrini's shoulder and put effective pressure into the choke. Here, Cabrini is able to survive generate base by planting both his feet and he's going to posture up and extract his head from the choke. So now looking at them side by side, we can see in the top picture where Hoffa finished Justin Rader, he is perpendicular to Justin and he's behind his shoulders. In the bottom picture, we can see that Cabrino was parallel towards Hoffa and was actually on top chest to chest rather than where in the top picture we see Hoffa is chest basically behind the shoulders of Justin. Cabrinha's defense is what allowed him to survive these positions. If you guys like these videos, please check out bggconcepts.net at the Rob Bernanke Online Academy.